Hello, this is Amber Thompson, owner of AT College Consulting, and I'm here today to share my tips for making the most of your next college visit. First of all, college trips do take time, money, and resources, so I want to make sure and encourage you to do your research before you arrive on campus. Please learn about the basics of the college. So know if you're walking onto a public or a private institution, have an idea of about how many students go to this campus. Are you going to be seeing just undergraduates or might you be seeing graduate and doctoral students on this campus as well? Also have an idea of what kind of environment you might be walking into. So are you looking at a suburban environment? Are you out in a rural? type of college or are you going to be right in the heart of the city? So don't let yourself be surprised by any of the basics that you can very easily figure out beforehand. Also, it would be really great if you could check out the college's website. That way you have a initial understanding of what the college offers and what you might enjoy exploring once you arrive. I always want to make sure that you have reasons why you are actually taking the time to see this school. And I also encourage families to always, if it's possible, to schedule in downtime to explore the area. Okay, so let's dive into the basics. It's wonderful if you can attend the admission information session. It's even better if you can also pair that with the student-led tour. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you only have time to do one or the other, I would definitely go with the student-led tour. Oftentimes, there's a lot of overlap, and I always encourage prospective students to take any opportunity they can to meet an actual current student. So if you only have time in your day for one, I would take the student-led tour for sure. And also make sure that you come with your own list of questions. So I want you to have an understanding of what it is you are hoping to find out when you step onto this campus. Okay, if we've got parents listening and students, I want you to know this too. The parent's job is really logistics coordinator. So parents have a really keen sense of the dates a family might be available. The parents are gonna be the ones booking the flights or gassing up the car and mapping out the trip and planning the travel. And parents, I also want to, again, encourage you to schedule in downtime for family fun. And also parents, when you arrive onto campus, I want you to let your students take the lead. And that might mean falling back if you're on a student-led tour. So, you know, hanging off onto the sides or in the back and letting your student be up front and be the one responsible for asking questions. Or perhaps it is making sure that your student is choosing the tour guide that they would like to go with in case you're given that option. So. Um, parents know that um, once you arrive, you've gotten your student there, and now it is really the student's job to truly immerse themselves in that environment and gain all of the information and insight that they can. So when you're on one of these campus tours or you're in an admissions info session, more than likely you'll be able to pick up for sure admissions publications. So perhaps they have that shiny view book that they're handing out to every family. Perhaps they have brochures on the different majors that they have. And so you can pick up, you know, four or five, six um, sheets on majors that you might be interested in pursuing when you're in college. Perhaps there are advertisements for special programs. Pick up any kind of publications you might want to flip through later that will also serve as a great way to jog your memory about what you saw on campus. You might also find a current issue of an alumni magazine which will give you a sense of how they engage with students once they graduate. And also those alumni magazines often 
really give you insight into what a college is proud of that is currently happening and how they are growing on their campus. And if you can, while you're out touring about, perhaps the college has a student newspaper. And if you can grab one of those to take a look at later, you can really get a sense of the main issues that students are writing and are concerned about and what type of events that they are promoting on campus. So I mentioned earlier that you should always come to a campus tour with your set of questions. And I want you to think about asking your set of questions to different people. So for example, if your question is, what's the most exciting thing that's happening on campus these days? If you were to ask a professor or an admissions rep or a student that question, you are definitely going to get three very distinct answers that really can help shape your understanding of what you are looking for in terms of an answer to that question. A couple of questions that you can ponder asking that are a little outside of the typical ones that you might hear could be, for example, um, hey, if you had a friend visiting, where would you take them for breakfast or lunch or dinner? And if your friend were staying for the day, where might you visit on campus or off campus? You can ask any of those three types of people from the professors to an admissions rep to a current student, what do you love doing outside of the classroom or outside of your job? And what makes your community special is also another one that really encourages the person who has been asked the question to give you a very personal, thoughtful reflection as to how they see this community impacting their life. All right, now some tips for elevating your campus visit. So you've done the basics. So what are some things that you can do beyond that? If you can sit in a class, that is wonderful. That was very much a pre-pandemic standard. And in its place, a lot of campuses are offering virtual classes that you can attend. So that might be an option if they're not yet opening up classes uh, for students, prospective students to come into yet. Um, but hopefully we will be there again soon and you can sit in a class that's actually happening on campus. I encourage you to check out the library, the student center, athletic facilities. If you're an artist, the performance spaces. Um, students can also arrange to meet on campus, the department heads in whatever area they are interested in. And this just requires a little bit of legwork before you get there to set up an email conversation and try to arrange for a meeting. And additionally, if you happen to know anyone on campus, so a friend or a family friend or a friend of a friend of an acquaintance, anyone who you have a slight relationship with can be a really great person to give you different insight into that college experience. Of course, on an official campus tour, the tour guides have all been instructed to follow a pretty similar script. But if you have the opportunity to chat with a current student and someone you know, you're certainly going to get a different level of insight than you would just from your typical standard admissions tour. And I love this quote that comes from uh, Rick Clark and Brennan Barnard in one of their college workbooks, where they encourage students to get off the path, get off the beaten path and explore campus on your own and essentially loiter appropriately, as they put it. Now, how can you do that? One way is to find that random student to talk to. And I know that that can take a lot of courage on behalf of the prospective student, but I have to tell you that college students love talking about their colleges. Most of them are very happy students and are really delighted to share their insight and their experiences with prospective students. I also love the notion of getting lost on campus. And as someone who struggles with map reading, I very naturally get lost on campus quite often. So it's interesting to see Okay, are students or staff stopping and asking if they can help, uh, help me find my way, see if I have any questions? 
Um, so either getting lost legitimately or just looking lost on campus can be a great way to get a different insight into a campus. I also really encourage you to have a meal on campus or somewhere in the neighborhood. So if you can, check out the dining halls where students are eating on a very regular basis. And if you can grab a meal, that is wonderful. Oftentimes, I would say that most college campuses have a coffee shop. Coffee keeps college kids running. And very often there is even a student run coffee shop on campus. So find out where students are heading to on campus for that mid-morning snack or tasty beverage, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon. Also, see what kinds of dining opportunities are in the local neighborhood. If you ask a student what their favorite off-campus dining spot is, more than likely they will have many to tell you about because students love to get off campus and break up the routine of going to the cafeteria. So if you can, check out one of the local neighborhood restaurants. That is wonderful too. And additionally, think about finding the local grocery store. After all, there are gonna be some mornings where maybe you just don't wanna to head to the cafeteria for breakfast and maybe you just want that comforting bowl of cereal. So you need to figure out where you might buy that um, box of Honey Nut Cheerios. So while you're in these dining spaces, try to take a look to see what type of conversation students are having. If you're off campus, you can see if perhaps professors and students are engaging with each other. Take a look to see if students are primarily eating in groups or if they're dining solo. And think about how comfortable you feel in these spaces. Okay, so I always wanna make sure that students and families find fun things to do in the area. This can be a really wonderful opportunity for the whole family and particularly that student to decompress, to find some space, to find some time to think and do something that your family regularly engages in. So if you love ice cream, donuts, boba, go find a shop close to campus and just have some downtime. Perhaps you're a family that really loves to visit museums or go on a hike. See what you can find to do in the area that is of natural interest to your family so that you can really work in that downtime to perhaps spark those, you know, conversations that are, you know, just bubbling under the surface, uh, you know, that can come out when students have the opportunity to get a little bit of distance from campus and start to think and process what they've seen and observed. Just a couple of warnings, uh, always make sure, never judge a campus by the weather that day. After all, it does need essentially to rain certain days, certain places, everywhere. Um, every once in a while, you are going to just not have stellar weather that day. So try to, try to separate your observations of the campus from you know, the mood of the day set by the weather. And also don't judge the campus by your tour guide. Their clothing, their major, what they choose to do on and off campus. Keep in mind that, you know, in a small college, that person is one of maybe a thousand. And at a large campus, they're one of maybe 30 or 40,000 students you could get to know. So you don't have to love your tour guide. Um, so just, you know, keep in mind to try to separate your observations from the campus from, you know, the weather, as well as, you know, perhaps your observations of the tour guide. Parents, I want to remind you to always let your students share their reactions first. After all, they're going to be the ones attending, potentially attending this school. And also students, form your own impressions first. So don't ask your parents what they thought of this, because it's really your impression that matters most. So think about things such as what surprised you about this campus? After all, you did a little bit of research ahead of time. You did your legwork. So what surprised you? Also, what surprised you when you got out and explored the town or the city uh, that this particular college was located in? And did this visit confirm your opinion of the college? What do you now want to know more about this institution? 
before you leave campus, please write down somewhere, uh, either a pad of paper or use your phone, use the, the notes feature somewhere, write down at least three impressions so that when you're leaving, you can later on reflect on things such as what your gut reaction to this campus was. You can write down if you have more questions. You can write down whether or not you feel like this is a place you want to and you're eager to return to. So write down your impressions in the moment so that the next day or a few weeks or even a few months later, you can look back at those impressions and reflections and start to spark your memory as to how your day went at this particular college. If you have any questions, I invite you to contact me. You can reach me at my website, atcollegeconsulting.com or via email, amber at atcollegeconsulting.com. I thank you for listening today and I look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions.